good afternoon welcome to cc live lectures dear friends i am dr pavitra bharatwaj from jesus and mary college university of delhi i am a faculty in the department of computer science so we have been taking up different topics related to computer science pure discipline of computer science and some of the areas which are applied at areas of Uh, computer science information technology and computer applications so in this regard today we are going to start with a new uh, session a new series of lectures and this is going to comprise of a very important and interesting topic of today uh, that is e-commerce so in this series we will be talking about all aspects related to e-commerce so first lecture that is today's lecture is basically going to be a broad introduction to what is e-commerce how does e-commerce fit into the domain of e-business then we will be talking about the different models of e-commerce that are prevailing a few of the business models of e-commerce which can help people and uh, then of course we'll be talking about the advantages disadvantages and main features of the models of e-commerce that are prevalent today so in this series we are going to talk about all these things in today's lecture and then the following lectures will also talk about more details of the uh, areas of the domain of e-commerce so without much ado let's quickly begin the lecture so in e-commerce basically if we say today we can see that computers have uh, uh, penetrated all aspects of our life and uh, we see that computers are present in all uh, areas of human activity whether it is education or it is healthcare or it is services or it is business manufacturing whatever but one of the primary areas where the impact of edu internet and computers was seen was the area of business so we have seen that how computers have changed the way businesses are done and we also notice that it is not just an internal change or internal transformation of business activities that takes place when uh, information technology is incorporated into the business model but it is also a the way the business interacts or exchanges with the other uh, the outside domain how how the business can change by its interaction from the external world because of the um, presence of the information and communication technology so this was one phase now we are talking about another phase where you know which is called the web 2.0 so the web 2.0 is talking about more of the other aspects related to internet not just communicating through the internet but rather we are talking about social networks we are talking about blogs we are talking about collaborative projects we are talking about collaborative learning ubiquitous computing so all these kinds of you know inter uh, interpersonal and uh, inter interactive activities which are taking place so therefore we see that how you know the world of human business and how the world of human activity is changing even while you know the growth of internet is happening so we can see that the effect of Uh, computers and the effect of internet and the effect of the world wide web is much more perceived uh, in, in our world than we can even than we had even uh, the uh, that was imagined so basically if we say what is e-commerce so basically in e-commerce we mean that you know it is the process of uh, buying selling or exchanging of products and services and also information over electronic systems such as the internet and other communication network so basically commerce is what commerce is a simple transaction of buying and selling of things now on in case of the internet it is not just simple buying and selling of things but we also talk about buying and selling of services and also of information so basically and because we this is called e so e means electronic electronic means that the systems are computer systems they work they are really connected to each other through networks and this network is generally the internet so basically e-commerce talks about this simple activity of buying and selling over the internet right so if you talk about the there are different perspectives 
of e-commerce or there are different uh, dimensions in which e-commerce works. So, uh, different perspectives first is how it is changing the business processes. If you if we compare a normal transaction with the e-commerce transaction. So, it is you know a business process is changed and the information is substitute for the physical business processes. So, basically we are giving more importance to information in the logical format in the in the intangible outcome then we are talking about the physical business processes which were occurring. Then the next aspect which is very significant in case of e-commerce is how it is you know in case of services how it is cutting the service cost and it is uh, making it imperative to provide good quality service in a specific time frame. So, speed, quality and cost are the three important uh, attributes of services which the e-commerce is touching. Then of course, we see in case of e-commerce we have learning is coming out. So, we have online training modules, we have e-education, we have so many kinds of uh, portals which are providing learning facilities, teaching learning facilities to the customers. Then of course, e-commerce is a collaborative activity in which there is not just collaboration or interaction amongst within the organization, but it is also outside the organization between one organization and the other organization between one organization and the customers or it could be between the organization and the statutory bodies like the government and the control etc. And then we see there is community because this is this has become a gathering space for community members. So, we see because of the advent of social networks and we see that all these groups are being formed for community communications and therefore, this, this e-commerce portals are also a space where people can exchange ideas, they can, uh, they can, they get a common space where they can communicate with each other. So, these are some important perspectives where e-commerce is affecting or where e-commerce is transforming the processes, right. So, if you talk about uh, e-commerce, so uh, the a very important model which is studied a lot in case of the e-commerce is called the 5C model. Now, in this case, the C can stand for multiple things. So, 5C means it is commerce, collaboration, computation, connection and communication. So, first thing is that you know e-commerce, what is e-commerce? E-commerce is transaction, it is a financial transaction which is happening. So, commerce basically means uh, buying and selling of things or exchanging any commodity with the other commodity. So, that is called commerce and trade. So, basically in this case again buying and selling of goods and services is happening. Then next is collaboration. Now, in case of collaboration, we see that since you know internet has come up, so we are seeing that there are open source software solutions which are provided. So, what happens is now these open source softwares, they provide a ready-made platform to the e-commerce professionals or to the e-commerce people. Uh, to the service providers and where they can use those open source platforms to collaborate and to build up their own solution. So, this is a very, very collaborative culture which has come up and more, more of a community learning kind of initiative. Then computation is a very important aspect. It has been long uh, uh, by since long it has been the aim of the computer community to have a ubiquitous kind of computation infrastructure or architecture. Now, what is ubiquitous architecture where you know we have a shared pool of computational resources and we have this kind of a grid architecture uh, of computational resources which can be used in the form of a shared pool. So, you have a system where you pay as per you are using the grid architecture. Then of course, connections are being built because of of course, the e, the e commerce model is based on the internet. So, a large number of connection building happens between the people. We also see that there are social networks and there are so many other kinds of um, channels through which people can connect to each other and exchange their ideas. So, internet provides an excellent platform for connecting different uh, people and uh, earlier we saw that you know now these connections they are 
available 24 by 7 and communication is possible uh, without any geographical or any kind of barrier. So, communication has become very, very uh, cheap, it has become very easy and it has become very fast. So, almost instantaneously exchange of messages and information can take place over the different communication channels through the internet uh, e-commerce uh, architecture. So, this is the 5C model which was given by Zwas which talks about the 5 major attributes of any e-commerce uh, model, business model. So, now if you talk, we have always we hear that in collaboration or in continuation with the word e-commerce, a very important term which is discussed is called the e-business. So, often these terms they are used you know interchangeably and uh, for most of the people they are the same. What is e-commerce? E-commerce and e-business are the same basically, but that is not the case and uh, there are different again there are different perspectives on e-business, e but technically speaking e-business is a term which is used to describe businesses run on the internet or which use internet technology to improve productivity and profitability of their businesses. So, basically this this was a uh, this was started in 1997 this was used in 1997 for the first time and basically in case of e-commerce we are only talking about buying and selling of goods and services but e-business is a much larger concept which does not just talk about buying and selling of course that is one part of the business but it also talks about controlling all other aspects of the business uh, and enhancing the productivity and profitability of the business while making it e while making it electronic. So, e-business provides a different, it is a broader term than as compared to the e-commerce term. So, basically they refer to you know a broader definition of e-commerce and it is not just buying and selling, but also servicing customers, collaborating with business partners, conducting e-learning and processing electronic transactions. So, it is much ahead of simple buying selling of products as we are talking about more so in case of E commerce things. So, in case of if you look at this diagram, you can see what is the relationship between e commerce and e business. In case of e business, which is basically it is improving the business performance, e, e business is a larger term, which is basically the main objective of e business is to improve the performance of the business activity. Whereas, e commerce is a subset or it is it is a part of the e-business activities which only deal with the buying and selling of the uh, products on the over the internet. So, e-business contains e-commerce we can say that. Now, there are different perspectives on this also some people for, for certain business models we say that e-commerce and e-business are the same because when the business basically it involves only buying and selling and not much ahead of it is done it is a simple kind of structure we say like that. Otherwise generally we say that e-commerce is a subset of e-business it is a it is a part of the e-business activity and in other cases sometimes we see that e-commerce actually intersects with e-business. So, only a part of the two is common, but a large part of the two are different. So, e-commerce it, uh, it does not fully con get contained in case of e-business, but it is only intersecting with the e-business. So, nevertheless the most accepted and the most uh, uh, optimum definition of or relationship between the e-commerce and the e-business is that e-commerce is basically a subset of the e business activities. They are just a subset of the business activities. So, basically we have already seen what is e-commerce. So, right and now we need to understand how and what is e-business. So, basically e-business is a process that an organization conducts over a computer mediated network. Of course, both the activities of e-commerce and e-business they are happening over the internet there is no doubt about it. But besides in case of e-commerce uh, only buying selling is happening whereas in case of e-business there are a large number of other activities of the business which are happening over the internet or which are having over the which are uh, ho um, holding over the computer mediated network. So, this is first activity is the production activity. Now, in case of production activity all the 
elements of production that is procurement, ordering, stock replenishment, payment processing, production control, all these activities they are somehow controlled by the computer or computer mediated networks. In case of customer focus, so basically the entire focus of all business activities these days is on the customer. So, customer focus business activities they are basically marketing, selling, customer order processing etcetera, they are also a part of the e-business activity. Then we see we have internal or management focus e-business activity. So, for example, for all internal activities uh, or internal control activities like we have employee service, training, recruitment, information sharing, for all these activities also the uh, computers or the use of information communication technology is happening in case of e-business activities. So, basically e-business is a very, very uh, advantageous uh, preposition for any business. It offers a large number of benefits to the business to convert it on or you to take it to the next level through making it, uh, you know, internet based or through making it uh, electronic. So, the first and the foremost advantage of the e-business activity is that it generates additional revenues. So, one thing is that because these are all internet based, so there are no geographical boundaries, there are no boundaries of space and time and therefore, there is this, this allows infinite market to the product. And for the, for the seller, it provides newer markets. So, there are, there is no geographical boundary in which only the business can be done. And it provides a large number of new products to the customer. So, basically this, this kind of uh, arrangement of e-business is advantageous for both as the buyers as well as the seller. Because the seller gets newer untapped markets and the buyer gets newer products and better deals. Uh, then it is also the next is you get new customers because you reduce the cost. So, we have integration and collaboration which is happening here. So, there are a lot of uh, schemes and there are a lot of innovative selling methodologies which are working for and which are generating newer customers will building uh, which are building uh, you know which are building a trust amongst the customer and it is also processing efficiency. So, Earlier what happens is that because actually on the internet the customer is an anonymous entity, but you have so many tools by which you can see the loyalty of the customer towards a brand. There is, there is so much of analytics which can go in to find out customer behavior, to find out what are the choices of the customers, what are the preferences of the customers, what are the buying pattern of the customers. So, by use of the technology you can get a large amount of information about the customer behavior behavior and therefore, you can increase efficiency of your operations looking at that kind of holistic data from the system. Then of course, it uh, reduces the complexity of the whole systems and it increases the variety of the information and technology. Then customer retention is much easier in case of e-business because you know all about your customers, you know a large amount of data about your customers. So, basically you can offer them so many things that it, it is easier. For example, a simple example is that if you are using an online uh, grocery shopping app for instance. So, as soon as you know you enter into the last week or the first week of a particular month, then you automatically start getting alerts and you automatically start getting pop ups about the new offers which are going on in that kind of a in that store. So, what is that? They are just trying to pull or they are just trying to keep the customer with them by, by having an anticipated advertising campaign. So, they know what the customer is going to buy and therefore, they are sending those targeted specific advertisement to that customer. So, as to control the uh, buying ac activity and trying to hold on to the customer. So, basically we have a lot of proactive and personalized offerings which are taking place in case of e-business activities because we have a lot of data about the customer which is not possible in case of simple brick and mortar kind of 
businesses then also it improves the image and position branding so basically uh, any business or any um, uh, company which uses innovative technologies or and which give new solutions to new and more efficient solutions to the customers is definitely going to have a higher position brand position than the other and it also keeps the leadership uh, of the enterprise leadership in the enterprise is important and it addresses the younger customer segments also so basically it is going to give a large amount of exposure to the business among all a segments of the uh, market and therefore it is able to attract more and more customers and to retain the customers loyalty by providing them various kinds of uh, innovative and personalized services so basically e-commerce so therefore we see that e-business and e-commerce they are very closely related and uh, there is a uh, there is some difference between the two which needs to be understood carefully so if we coming now we are shifting our focus only to e-commerce in this specific lecture so we will be talking more on e-commerce only so electronic commerce is been identified as the facilitation of commercial transactions electronically and this happened because of two main technology solutions which were provided by the banking uh, technology and the first in this case was electronic data interchange and the th second was the electronic funds transfer so eft we all we all have uh, are aware of neft and you know electronic funds transfer how we uh, do the neft and the uh, data interchange electronic data interchange so these two technologies are said to be the seed or the parent technologies which later developed or helped e-commerce develop into a special business module so in this case if we see the electronic data interchange or electronic funds transfer both are electronic ways of transferring money from one account to the other now in case of electronic data exchange or interchange the structured transmission of data between organizations by electronic means happens so it is used to transfer electronic documents or business data from one computer system to the other computer system so basically whatever documents are these so they allow a collaborative environment collaborative working environment by transferring documents from one system to the other and in case of funds transfer the transfer is of money from one account to the other and both these of course uh, data interchange facilities can be provided by any kind of hardware and a different kind of collaborative software as even nowadays google is providing us very good uh, data in in interchange and collaborative services and neft or any kind of fund transfer services they are basically provided by the bank by the the different banks internet banking options are there and the portals they are they provide the customers with uh, you know these facilities themselves so the customer himself or herself can easily transfer the data between one system or his account to the any other account or even receive data the vice versa so basically if we talk about e-commerce so we just discussed that the the roots of e-commerce they lie in the banking industry so by when the funds transfer technology was adopted by the banks in 1970s at that time the the seed for a uh, commerce or an exchange of business on the internet or electronically was started then in the 1980s many businesses they took for electronic data interchange so they they used to exchange data due to uh, or by the use of different technologies later on fax technology was adopted so fax was used for transferring data and documents from one system to the other then in the case of 1990s of course we saw that the world wide web was uh, started it was found out and internet became the buzz thing so internet was used for information publishing and dissemination of knowledge then we had economies of sale scale because of internet we could you know we the business could cater to very small 
from very small to very large amount of data, uh, a large number of customers. So, it could be easily scaled up and scaled down and also economies of scope. So, a diversified businesses were found. So, one business could be changed into another kind of business, a company which is dealing in a specific kind of product can move on to any other kind of product. So, a diversification of business activities became very important and then in the 2000s was the time when e-commerce became most accepted and trusted way of doing businesses among the people. So, this was done using uh, secure protocols and electronic payment services. So, the protocols were designed so that uh, safely the fund transfer could take place and development of the uh, business models on the e-commerce platform was started. So, uh, basically different protocols which are uh, the technical part of the e-commerce, what are the different protocols and what are the different services which work at the back end to provide a technology framework for e-commerce shall be discussed in the uh, following lectures. So, basically if we look at the framework for e-commerce, so in this case we can see it is a it's a holistic uh, services which are provided by the e-commerce providing services. So, we can see that there are some core services which all e-commerce companies can provide or they work on those core areas, maybe it is business, it is communication, it is education, it is collaborative activities. And then there are some support services which are provided like there are people services, there are policy oriented or policy uh, um, uh, policy perspective services, there are different kinds of services which are provided. So, this is basically an entire framework which works for the management of the enterprise through providing some core and some support services for the e-commerce uh, business models. So, now, if we look at the process of e-commerce or how basically this entire system works, whatever the model is, the basic process of the e-commerce activity remains the same. So, the first activity uh, in case of an e-commerce is to attract the customers. Now, what, what is done to attract the customers? It is simple, advertising and marketing initiatives are taken up for attracting more and more customers. Now, since we are talking about e-commerce, so therefore, the main focus of advertising advertising and marketing will also be on the website. So, different websites they use uh, uh, different ways of attracting customers by giving online advertisements, by showing them online videos or giving some kind of lucrative uh, offers kind of a thing. So, once the customer is attracted, once the customer has come to the e-commerce website, then the next is uh, to show or to interact with the customer by showing the catalog and giving the negotiation. So, basically different offers are given to the customers. We say that different, we can now see that different uh, websites which are doing the e-commerce, they offer very, very lucrative offers. They, they show discounts, they give free gifts, they give uh, you know early bird prices kind of thing. So, different kind of uh, offers are given to the customer to lure him into buying and to uh, make him it uh, make the entire deal very customer oriented. So, negotiation catalog building and interaction with the customer to uh, put him into a position where he can or where he will certainly order uh, from the site is a, a very important step. Once the customer has place the order, then the system has to capture the order and it has to uh, also look at the payment uh, aspect of it, it has to process the payment. So, basically it is the handling and management of orders once it is, once the order has been uh, placed by the customer. So, payment is made and once the payment option is chosen, then the transaction is uh, undertaken. After the successful completion of the transaction, then the system has to look in for options of delivery. So, timely delivery of the item uh, is also very important aspect of the e-commerce quality control. And after the delivery has been done, even then the customer service team has to keep working. And once the, serve, once the sh product has been shipped, till the time the product reaches the customer's doorstep, complete tracking of order is done. And even after that, if the customer has any kind of queries or any kind of support is required, then for that we have a customer support 
uh, help desk and we have a full customer support team to handle that. So, basically the model is slightly different from the brick and mortar kind of businesses where a few steps may not be required. So, this makes the e-commerce system a little more um, sophisticated and a little more complex than a normal brick and mortar kind of business enterprise. So, basically e-commerce it of course, it gives a large amount of a large number of uh, advantages both to the customer as well as to the seller. The first advantage, the first and foremost advantage of e-commerce is that it allows for faster buying of procedure and it is always easy to find products. So, therefore, buying and selling both becomes easy. So, the customer can uh, you know order products sitting at his the comfort of his home and without having to stand in the long queues to get the billing done. So, it is basically a 24 7 buying selling experience. Now, uh, then also uh, it is also good for the customers because they can easily select the product from different providers and they are not even required to move around physically. Then physical uh, for the providers or for the sellers also it is very important because their operational costs become very low and they can provide better quality of service at the low cost. It is always easy and it is you know easy to start and manage an e-commerce or an e-business enterprise than it is to uh, start a physical business enterprise because there is no need here for any kind of physical company setups. The amount of human resource required to manage a uh, e-business is much less than that which is required to manage a full-fledged uh, physical or a brick and mortar kind of business. So, of course, there are a large number of advantages which the e-commerce poses, but also we also see that you know there are no free lunches. So, there are also a number of disadvantages which are seen in case of e-commerce. So, first thing is that certain customers they, they do not have any kind of uh, uh, product quality guarantee is not there. So, sometimes people are not sure of the quality of the product that they will get just by looking at it on a uh, on a screen. So, they some people they feel that they need to physically see the product all before buying it specifically if the product is a more expensive kind of product. Then there are ser several issues related to security. Now, security because once the transactions are happening online. So, there, there is always a, a possibility and there is always a threat of hackers. So, basically these are going to these are the people who may steal the data or they may steal the identity and they may then you know post uh, or they may do the shopping and they may cause harm to the they may cause economical harm to the uh, customer or even to the business house. So, security concerns of course are there. Then sometimes people also are not sure about the uh, legality of the process and they feel that in case they have a dispute then where and whom to contact for the e-commerce because there is complete anonymity of the supplier and of the buyer of the customer. So, neither the customer knows who the who is selling nor the seller knows who is buying. So, therefore, this kind of faceless transaction occurs which may not be uh, sometimes which may not give the feeling or it may not be very reassuring for the customer especially to go through a transaction using this kind of a e-commerce kind of a mechanism. But nevertheless, e-commerce has become very, very popular over the time. So, we see that you know uh, there are different types of e-commerce transaction models which are already working. So, based on the relationship of the transaction parties. So, who are the people who are transacting? Who are the people who are you know buying and selling? Depending on that we see that there are a number of models. So, we see and these are very common terms which we often hear. So, here we are only using an acronym like business to customer. So, we say B to C, business to business B to B, business to government B to G, consumer to consumer or customer to customer. C to C and consumer to business that is C to B. Besides this also there are several other combinations like government to consumer can also be possible. Then we also talk about government to business or business to government those kind of models are also possible. So, we will be talking about and we will be seeing what happens in each of these 
categories and how they are different from each other and what are the advantages or disadvantages of each of these models of e-commerce transactions. So, the first model that we see is a business to business model. So, B 2 B e-commerce. So, here we it simply means that you know it is open for all interested parties or limited to specific pre-qualified participants. So, it is basically it can be a private electronic market or it can be an open market where anybody can participate. So, it, it is you know like a consortium of companies if we are talking about a private electronic market we are talking about something like a consortium of companies who have decided that they will transact amongst each other only. So, no other outsider who is not a part of the consortium can be a part of this kind of business activity amongst the group of companies. So, here companies they are doing business with each other business houses are transacting with each other. So, such as you know manufacturers they are selling the goods to distributors and wholesalers and wholesalers are selling it to retailers. So, all these are business to business activities. So, commercial activities amongst the companies through the internet they are they are known as uh, B 2 B business activity. So, basically these help uh, you know in linking of vendors and customers and these are supply chain software activities. So, basically the main software which works here is the supply chain software. So, in this case different tools and techniques are used by the B 2 B enterprises. So, we use pricing as a tool for doing the transaction. So, the product price or the service price is used then sometimes application service provider models are used. Then generic models for personalized attention to customers may be used or use of comparison shopping. So, B 2 B enterprises can use any of these tools for uh, in, in entertaining or for doing their kind of transactions. So, B 2 B transactions could be you know they could be aggregators, aggregators are people who will simply collect or keep uh, aggregating or collecting the commodities and they are like you know they are then going to sell it later. Then some could be a process integration kind of activity. So, these are manufacturers who will who act like hubs who will collect the materials from all these and they will do an integration kind of thing. Then important uh, transactions they are like community transactions or alliance. So, these are like social groups which are working and they are negotiating as a con uh, as a community as an alliance building and then you have the content developing uh, B2B transactions and of course, we have the auctions. So, in case of auctions one business house or one company it, it gives the products it auctions the products and other business houses they compete for that kind of auction or they that is called a dynamic pricing market. So, depending on the situation prevalent in the market the price of the good or the service is determined by the different enterprise. So, basically B 2 B enterprises they are very advantageous this kind of businesses are very advantageous because they allow direct interaction with the customer. So, if in case uh, I am a manufacturer then I can directly contact the retailer and the retailer can directly contact the manufacturer. So, in this case the third party is eliminated then it is more focused on sales promotion. So, basically enhanced sales are possible and customer loyalty is built in case of B 2 B transaction because once the transaction has been happened successfully it builds a trust a mutual trust among the two parties and therefore, brand loyalty and customer loyalty develops. Then these transactions are very very scalable. So, therefore, the scope and the size of the transaction or the scope and size of the order can be dynamically and can be adjusted according to the feasibility according to the convenience of both the parties. And of course, this leads to savings in the distribution cost because uh, or because of this consortium it becomes easy to e reach each of the individual uh, parties. So, therefore, B 2 B business model of the e commerce is very advantageous for both the buying as well as the selling side of the companies. Now, the next model that we see is a business to consumer model. Now, this is the most common model that we see where businesses are generally selling it to the general public. 
so typically through a catalog and they utilize a shopping cart kind of software so we are all we have all in uh, in the recent time it has become very common so everybody has undertaken any e shopping uh, activity so that is basically a business to consumer activity so this is basically an indirect trade between the company and the consumer so different consumers they can directly go to the site of the company and they can buy it so this is direct online selling so basically in this case you can uh, go and you can sell the uh, the goods and services and anybody can purchase any products directly from the suppliers website so this this is a very uh, popular model which has which is gaining tremendous popularity in uh, emerging economies like ours right so next model that we see is a consumer to business model now in this case consumer to business model is the reverse of business to consumer model so in this case a consumer basically posts his project with a set of budget online and within hours the companies review the consumer's requirement and bid on the project so basically the consumer is the central part in this and he is selling his idea or he is selling his product to other companies so the consumer reviews the bids so the companies they are competing for the product so they they file a bid and the consumer he reviews the bid selects the company and that will complete the project and the consumer to uh, business basically it is a, a strategy which empowers the consumers a lot so around the world this has changed the way businesses are done between the consumers and the uh, companies so this gives a lot of power to the individual uh, customer while he is transacting while he is negotiating with larger companies next model is the consumer to consumer model now this is very famous these days we have all seen olx like so in this case online transactions of goods and services takes place between two consumers via online classified ads and auctions or by selling personal services online in this case ebay is uh, one very common example then olx in our case is another example so though there is no physical uh, no uh, visible intermediary involved but the parties cannot carry out the transactions without the platform which is provided by the online market maker such as the ebay so if i want to sell anything and i want to post the ad online so i need a platform that platform is provided to me by that kind of market maker like ebay or olx where people can post the ads and the interested person individual only a consumer only can come and can take the services or can take the uh, advertisement and can take the product and the negotiation happens on the marketplace between the two consumers so this is very important and this is very very beneficiary because there is no intermediary there are no third party agents and the marketplace which is providing is only providing a platform they generally they take a very less uh, amount as their in, in their their running costs kind of thing so the transaction cost the overall transaction cost is very less there is no need of any expensive advertising and this is round the clock availability and it provides a very wide reach and a very wide uh, visibility to the individual product or the individual service which is being provided so these are negotiable market based prices which can be floated the buying process is very simple and it is very it's a good potential for the purchase based on needs of the person and it is also a way of you know recycling a large number of products because uh, these can uh, these instead of going to the market and then coming back these can directly be transacted among the buying and the selling consumers or individuals or households now next kind of model is the business to government model now in this case this is basically a type of b2b model only where you are not selling it to another business but these are used for the 
governments to trade and exchange information with various business organizations. So, such websites are accredited by the government and they provide a medium to business to submit application forms to the government. So, like the government all often floats tenders for example. So, those tenders are basically uh, an invitation to the business houses to come and give their services to the government sector. So, now nowadays instead of floating the tenders in a hard format, these are generally done through portals. So, on the government portals or on government accredited websites, this kind of uh, an application is demanded by the government and interested parties may respond to that through the form. Now, the next is government to business. Now, in case of government to business models, basically governments they use business to government model websites to approach business organizations such as websites, support auctions tenders and application submission functionalities. So, governments they go to the business houses and they deal with the individual businesses using the business to government model or government to business model. Next is government to citizen model. Now, this is very important. Governments basically they use the G2C website models and these are generally used to approach citizens in general. Such websites basically they support auctions of vehicles, machinery or any other materials among the people. So, they also provide services like registration for birth, marriage, death certificate. The main objective for this is to reduce the average time for fulfilling citizen requests for various government services. So, all these are today all services of the government like we have the e-passport seva and we have so many other services of the government. We have all e-governance portals through which the uh, citizens can get all the services which are offered by the government at their doorstep only by simple uh, simply logging into the different portals of the government. So, this is uh, an important initiative by different governments to empower their citizens and to build in transparency and to reduce corruption, red tapeism and bureaucracy in their systems. So, basically these are the different models based on, we have discussed the different models based on the different uh, parties which are involved or the nature of the transacting parties. Now, e-commerce models can also be classified according to the business models. So, there are five types of e-commerce business models. So, the first is drop shipping, next is wholesaling and warehousing, next is white labeling then private labeling and manufacturing and we have subscription based modeling. So, basically in this case what are we talking about? We are basically talking about how the different models can be developed, how different companies they work on different kind of a business strategy using the internet based market platform. So, in this case the first uh, business model that we talk about is the white labeling strategy. Now, in case of white labeling, basically it is a business plan in which one company produces the product and another company rebrands and distributes it. So, basically it is a very fast strategy and uh, what one needs is only to have uh, uh, the knowledge about which product is going to be successful and which product is being sell, sold by other companies. So, then you need to only design your package, label it and sell it. So, this model is usually seen in beauty and wellness industry that the product is manufactured by one company and it is sold by branded and sold by some other company. This is also happening a lot in case of apparel industry where branding, white labeling branding is taking place and the go goods are sold online uh, by some brand which is not the actual manufacturer of the product or the service. So, the biggest challenge in case of white labeling is the demand that is it is very important that the complete order demand should be managed because uh, the production team is different from the marketing team here. So, basically a minimum amount of production is required uh, only then the white labeling kind of company can model can be functional. So, if you have ordered more than the request, then there is no way to return it. So, this option is feasible if you are ready to work full time 
on the business and you know exactly the product demand in the market as well as the product trends. So, if you have ordered a product and you are holding on the product and certain cer suddenly the demand for the product goes, it goes out of fashion or it goes out of trend, then in that case you will be in a difficult situation because you cannot go and or replay, you know return the product back to the manufacturer or to the original label or to the original brand. Next model that we see is the private labeling and manufacturing uh, model of e-commerce. Now, in this case private labeling is a good option for low investment businesses. So, if we have the perfect idea with lack of resources to build your own enterprise or to build your own manufacturing unit, then private labeling is a good option. So, companies which manufacture off-site products for sale, uh, they send the plans or prototypes to contract manufacturers who produce the product according to the customer's specification. Then they may ship it directly to the customer to a third party or the company selling the final product. So, basically in this case uh, the idea of the product is with the person, but the person does not have the infrastructure and the resources to manufacture it himself or herself. So, what he does is that he outsources the manufacturing to someone else and the manufacturer can then either give it back to the person or to the company which had ordered or it can give it directly to the customer. So, this is they basically this is on demand manufacturing and it allows the suppliers to be changed quickly. So, if there are any problems with the quality of the product then the seller is not tied up with any particular supplier and therefore, the startup costs are minimal because you only have an idea and the rest of the resources are provided by the uh, by the third party who is going to do the manufacturing. Next uh, model is the wholesaling and warehousing uh, model. So, in this case you require a significant investment because you need to build up a large amount of inventory and then you also need systems for tracking the demand, customer order, shipping. So, there is also an investment in the storage space because you are you are keeping a warehouse of a large amount of goods. So, you can store an, uh, a variety of goods which are large in number. So, both qualitatively and quantitatively you need to build up a good inventory of different products. So, different companies are there which provide this kind of retailing facility and then you sell these to the retailer. So, you, you basically you work on the margin of uh, you know the retailing and the supply side margin is what you get because you are holding the product. So, whenever you get a good premium you tend to sell the products from the warehouse, but this is only a viable solution where you see uh, where you have this kind of a uh, enormous infrastructure, enormous investment capacity and potential. Then the next model is the drop shipping model where you know we where you have an e-commerce store which buys the products from a manufacturer or wholesaler and sells it to the customers at a commission. So, it is basically only a dealing kind of a thing, you buy it from X and you sell it to Y. So, this is the simplest form of e-commerce that eliminates the hassle of managing inventories, stocks and dealing with the packaging. You just need to set up a storefront and handle payments and orders. So, most of the stores these days that we are doing the shopping from, these are actually drop shipping. Drop shipping the word itself means that their job is only to drop the shipment to your place, handle your payment, take the money, that is it. So, the major limitation with the product quality is not up to the mark, then the sellers are slow, you will have to be responsible. So, if the customers they return the goods to the persons or to the seller, then the, the product is not returned directly to the manufacturer, but it is returned to the company which is going to do the shipment. So, therefore, these drawbacks will be added to the website review. So, if you are not manufacturing the product, yet you are responsible for the quality of the product and therefore, if the quality is not up to the mark, then you will have to face negative reviews and feedbacks from the customers. 
So, basically uh, this is these are the different models of e-commerce based business models and uh, this will be all for today. We will be continuing with the technical aspects of the business models in the next lecture. Till then, thank you.